Thank you for clicking on the video. Welcome back to the channel. This is another review for Love and Marriage Huntsville, Season 8, Episode 6. I didn't get the name, but we're going to have it in the description. It'll be right. It'll be right. <clears throat> we're picking back up where Ken and um, Trisha are talking about her reservations with getting married. Um, her intent is to marry him, but her last marriage was a little rocky, a little shaky. She's still very um, coy about what actually happened in her in her last marriage. Uh, I'm not really sure because Stormy made it seem like the man was abusive. I mean, she called him Mr. And if you don't think abuse when you hear Mr., <laughs> then I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what he was what he was doing over there, but um, she says that he changed over time. He was one way initially, and after they got married, he changed over time. And she's afraid of that happening again. Ken, of course, is like, I mean, well, people grow and change. And so if change is the problem, you might have a problem with me, too, because I'm not going to be the same me 10, 15 years from now. And hopefully you won't be the same. Um, but he challenges her, go ahead and expedite this conversation. You're going to need to spearhead this because he's not knocking down your door for a divorce. And so you're going to have to do the, you, she's going to have to be the one to make the first move. Chris and Nail. Nail want a new closet. Chris said he going to make it happen. I don't even know. This scene was just like, okay. <laughs> anyway, they switch subjects to her birthday party. She's nervous about inviting both Stormy and Tisha. They had a, their last encounter at the reunion wasn't pleasant. And so she's worried about them showing their ass at her birthday party. Um, Chris mentions the kids. Well, first he says he feels like they should all, they should have a conversation beforehand. She's not really entertaining that. She's just hope, hoping that. They both show up and they're on their best behavior. Anyway, he brings up the kids. And, um, of course, we want Lexi to be there. But, I mean, she may or may not be there. Um, she ain't answering anybody's calls. Chris reached out to her and she she didn't answer. And so things are still a bit shaky with um, Nell and stepdaughter. Kimmy and Maurice, they have dinner with the other Scots. Um, we talk business first, you know, Kimmy wants to, um, she's work. she has a project, um, that she's working on. They want to, I'm assuming it's going to be a restaurant, going to be an eatery of some sort. Excuse me. She don't want it to take forever. So she'll be taking a few bids. Basically, this is Kimmy's bottom line. Listen, Marceau, you take too long. You know, you, you, you take your time and she's somebody that is a stickler for time. And for projects being wrapped up in a timely manner. And so, because she knows that, she don't want no problems with them. She she does not want any issues to come about between she and Marceau or them and, and you know, Maurice. I mean, and Marceau and Tisha. She don't want no problems. She don't want no problems. Um, but she she needs him to finish projects and and past practices show that he doesn't and then we run down the past the, the the past instances where he don't finish what he starts um she say you know i know he's busy you know but there was a time in the past where she needed him to um he or he was the contractor on a um on something they were doing at on her mom's property and it took forever. She was constantly, you know, asking what's going on. When's the deadline? Somebody's showing up today. And she'd be met with excuses and frustration. And so, again, she don't want no problems. Um, Marcel says that there's a difference in them doing stuff, uh, you know, under the table or for a friend and uh, as opposed to a commercial um, obligation. And listen, that's understandable. My husband and I are now in this business. Um, we recently started a, a renovation company ourselves. We do, <laughs> we sponsored one of my, I, I want to say it was the last Love and Marriage Huntsville video or the one before that. 
We sponsored it. Um, but that's 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 ours. Junk removal, handyman services, um, and so sometimes we have to outsource contractors and, and you know things of that nature. But this whole bidding process and all of that, um, hearing them talk about it just really had me thinking about the shit we got coming down the pike. And how, you, you know, the people, you, you, your people that you're familiar with will feel like they take precedent or, you know, they're going to be prioritized. But we're not going to prioritize you over city of Atlanta. We're not going to pri prioritize you over, you know, whatever big contract we might have. And so I, I absolutely understood Marceau with that. Uh, but I'm I'm not I'm not believing that Kimmy's not paying you. She's still a paying customer. And so hold on, cause this child out. Okay, so like I was saying, Marceau is not gonna prioritize Kimmy's project over the pot mints he gotta put up, the 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 the, the movie theater he building. Whatever he got going on, he's made, he's letting it be known. Listen. <laughs> However, he will bid. He will put his bid in. He's not worried about scope um, coming out on top. But they'll, they'll, you know, they'll go through the process. They'll, they'll do, they'll do what they got to do. Um, Tisha, because she don't have have anything else to add to the conversation, she changes the subject to Marceau and his wedding ring because we was talking about that. <sighs> Courtney, he on the courts. He's meeting up with Ken. They're going to, you know, put up some shots. Um, he and Ken go way back, like, to 10 years old. <laughs> they go way back. They play when they did. They've been playing ball since they was gay high. Um, and I love to see it. I love to see. I love to see it. It makes me think about, you know, like, it, it, it really just gives you that small town feel. Like, Huntsville must be this big. <laughs> that... You know, all these people grew up together, and they all went to school together. You know, I love it. I really do. Um, it reminds me of Riverdale. Riverdale, Georgia. Not like Riverdale, the show. Riverdale, Georgia. <laughs> um, Courtney. Yeah, Courtney. Courtney and Ken, because I had went back up in the notes. Sorry. Um, Ken shares that, you know, he and... Trisha, you know, have been going together. They've been going steady for a little minute now. He's all in. He's a bit scared, though. You know, listen, the whole marriage situation, I don't know, because she's still married. Um, he's not going to make any moves until she's divorced. Um, people think that she's still married, which is a problem for them, because he be out here looking like a whole side nigga, and, and that's not the case. They've the optics don't look good, but she's been separated for the past five to three years or something like that. She was separated three years before he came into the picture. Um, and so she just she's she's gonna have to get that situation rectified. She 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 gotta go on and get the divorce rolling. Um Courtney say, what about if it takes another couple, you know, a few years? Ken says he's not waiting another few years, so this has to happen soon. Um Courtney changed the subject to Stormy's party. Um, the Galantine's party, which leads them to talking about Martell and how he went up in the thing, acting like he didn't know who Trisha was. And his when it, Ken is like, why would you do that? Because are you trying to make it look like she was, you know, one of your ones? Is that what you're trying to do? Courtney said, maybe I should have a little conversation about it. Ken said, I'm going to let her do that. I'm going to let her do that. I'm, I, I got her back, though. I'm behind her 100%. Um... But he don't, he don't appreciate Martell creating speculation. All right, the people, everybody headed to Nell's party. Trisha and Ken, they ride with Stormy and Courtney. The Scots ride together. Uh, Stormy look good, okay? Stormy had her 80s, early 90s drug dealer baby mama look going. You already know what it gave. Blonde, wispy updo with a little cascade curl bang coming down. French roll maybe in the back. It was it was a updo. It was the wispy updo from the eighties and the early nineties that we was doing. Her whole look made me think of a drug dealer's baby mama. I loved every minute of it. Now she had a lot of cleavage going on. Titties might have popped out if she did any type of quick movement. 
I still loved it. I still feel like she looked at the foot good. <laughs> um, anyway, Trisha, she said she nervous to meet Nell. You know, she, Tisha told her that Nell can be um, in your face and kind of loud and extra, kind of feisty. So I'm like, what? Why would she say that? Listen, I need a little... I need, what she been saying about me, if that's what she said about Nell. Um, she said that she was... she's one, Well, well, she said that you're one way, one minute, and then the next, you're another way. <sighs> Courtney say, listen, don't believe everything you hear. Over there in the car with the Scots, they're also having a conversation about Stormy because they, they're confused as to why they got an invitation to her Galentine situation in the first place when they was just cussing each other out at the reunion. Like, shouldn't a conversation happen before this? They think it's weird. Um, I just think it's a new season. Let's move on. I think that that's what Stormy's on. She knows that this is work. It's a new season. We all have to film. Here's an, here's an opportunity to get a check. Go on around there and film the scene. Anyway, um, back over there in the in 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 the car with Stormy and Courtney, they the, the sentiments are the same. Listen, the, it's, the feeling is mutual. They don't really care for the Scots either. Um, Courtney really don't care for Maurice and how he did Kimmy. Like he ain't forgot. He ain't forgot what he put Kimmy through while she was going through chemotherapy. Everybody get to the party. Well, the Scots get there first. Um, we have this very awkward and weird conversation with Chris's kids about the interview that Lexi did. Cause I think Kimmy asked if, if Lexi's Lexi was coming, she not coming. This was a very forced and contrived conversation and it was highly unnecessary, but okay. Um, Mel. She arrives, Mel, she got her cat suit on. Mel looked like Mel looked like exactly where she was at in the club. <laughs> she had her shades on. Um right away. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, right away, Tisha walk up on her like, Mel, take these damn shades off. And then reaches to reaches to try to take him off of her. She would have got swatted real fast. Girl, get your hand off of me. Mel said, I don't know where you at, but I'm in the club. Shade saying on. Okay, she got her hater blockers on. What you mean? <laughs> she got her hater blockers on. She was trying to make her go over there and talk to Marcel. Tisha was on one. Tisha had all the drinks before. She pre-gamed before the pre-game. Before the pre-game. Tisha, Tisha was drunk and had all the liquid courage to just say whatever she wanted to say to people. She was asking for... And ass whoop it honestly. <laughs> Cause don't reach out trying to take nothing off my face. Don't do it. I hate when people do that. You try to take your hat off. Take that off. Get your fucking hands off me. Anyway, um, they talking to Trisha. Trisha. So how long you been training? You know how long you been married? You know they get all in her, all in this lady's business, and she tells she tells them she always has to act weird about it instead of just being like, my ex husband and I have been separated for the past five years, but I got me a new the, the man I'm with. That's my man, and you could have just shut it down right there. She always makes it seem like it's something missing from the story, like she hiding something. Girl, what? Why why are you creating? confusion around it when it don't have to be um mel ask her about the paperwork has a guy going she ain't filed ain't no paperwork these folks just separated because they said they were <laughs> ain't no paperwork okay um mel say do you got one foot in one foot out she say no she out for sure she's out for sure uh over there with the men folk they also talking to ken about his marital situation um, and he tells them what's, you know, what's going on. Men folk don't really care. You know, Maurice is like, wait a minute. She, if, if she want to get divorced, she can. Has she talked to a lawyer? Cause I mean, it's been five years. She can get out of this. <laughs> and he like, really? You don't say. And why Maurice sounded like he had no mic on? The sound was really terrible in this scene. It was terrible. Um, back over there with the girls. 
Tisha, she feels like, you know, she needs to bring Trisha up to speed on all the ladies and their personalities. Well, you know, like, we all, and we all feisty. You know, some of the ladies can be feisty. What? Especially you, Nell. Nell says, and you're not feisty? Hmm. <laughs> We're not understanding why Tisha has all this rah, rah, rah. Like, she's really on something. Her energy is very negative towards Nell. Just really poking the bear. Really poking the bear with her. Telling her, um, I'm going to start calling you Linnell and Mel because y'all names sound too close. No, you're going to call me Nell, which is what I've been telling y'all to call me. Linnell. Just really being argumentative. Now, if that lady had got up and drug your ass up out of her party, then what? Um, everybody's confused like I said Stormy interjects like what's going on I, I guess this confusion because I mean it's like it's weird that you because you want to talk about it later but she don't know what y'all talking about and Tisha's like no what's weird is you inviting me to your Galentine situation after we were just into it at the reunion we ain't talked since then and Stormy's like wait what girl what are you on I'm on good high high, high vi vibrating high we vibrating high over here. I got good energy. I don't know what's going on with you. And um, now they're now they're going back and forth. Tisha and Stormy. And Stormy was like, okay, since we're talking about the reunion, what was what you meant by go pop some pills? What you meant by it? You know, what 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 you meant by that when you said that? And Tisha just sipping her drink and then gonna say, You heard what I said. And then it's to be continued. She'll talk about some. You heard what I said. Well, I guess the clap meant, girl, let's go. I feel like Stormy, my money on Stormy, honestly. And not to, you know, you can't put nothing past Tisha. Because Tisha, this Tisha right here, this the one Kiki be talking about. This the Tisha Kiki be talking about. Um, Yeah. I feel like Tisha done been in a fight, a two or three on her day. Absolutely. She she got she got she got a lot of this. She got a lot of mouth. Um, however, I think Stormy has also been in a few tussles in her day. But she don't have she the type of person that don't do the mouth. She she look like the one that sit back and let you run your mouth and say what you're saying. <laughs> and then it's too late. Now you getting your ass whooped. What the hell wrong with Tisha? What was wrong with her? She crazy. Tisha was drunk. She's talking about they 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 was gonna offer a bottle to their table because the bottle girls came out. They was gonna offer them a bottle. Tisha talking about yeah, we want a bottle. Marcel quickly was like, uh, uh y'all want shots? Ain't giving that girl no bottle because he know how drunk she is and that she's over there showing her. Is he gonna get her next week? <laughs> he gonna really chastise her and have her crying. Do you have to say something about every mistake that I make? <laughs> this right here. Yes, you embarrass you and him on tonight's episode. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It's Call Me Busby, and I'll chat with you later. Peace and light.